458 earthquakes around Yellowstone the past week, ladies and gentlemen. I just pulled up an article that said 230 on Newsweek. It's actually 458, and you can see the raw data right here. Over the past seven days around Yellowstone, that's crazy. And I also did some more research, and I found, well, first of all, here's the modeling ash fall distribution from a Yellowstone super eruption. This is the most detailed white papers that I've found yet with multiple models showing what would happen to the U.S. and the rest of the world, but it's mainly focused on the U.S. and parts of Canada, if Super Yellowstone goes boom. And it's bad, folks. However, I've heard so many people talk about how in South Dakota, if you're at the X Point location, which is where my bunker is, I have a concrete bunker in southwest South Dakota, literally, it's over 2,000 square feet, and people were telling me, Rex, that's too close to Yellowstone. You're going to get buried in ash. Well, I'm going to share with you in just a moment, ladies and gentlemen, how much ash you can expect in your neck of the woods if Yellowstone goes boom. And it's not necessarily if, it's when. And with over 458 earthquakes around Yellowstone area the past week, that does create a little bit of a spider tingling sensation in my mind. Now, do I think that we're going to see a, a huge earthquake next week that's going to cause the entire thing to erupt? I certainly hope not. It is something to be aware of, though. So also, well, let me just let me just jump right in. Let's take a look at the article that I found originally to start doing this research because there were a few people that left comments on the Leak Project channel said, Rex, you've got to look into the earthquakes that are going on in in Yellowstone, there's over 200 of them the past week. Well, it's double that, folks. Yeah, more than, you're right, double Newsweek. It's double that over the past seven days. So this is quite an increase. And the largest, uh, the largest earthquake recently hit Yellowstone area since March of 2014. So it's been over three years since we've had an earthquake of that magnitude, not to mention there are always earthquakes in that area, small ones. And it's not the concern of the magnitude of the earthquake. It's the amount of earthquakes that I'm seeing in the region and the way that the media is now starting to talk more about it. Um, this article is a great article. I would definitely recommend looking at it. It's on the online library.wiley.com. Definitely worth taking a look at. And now it's time to take a look at the models, folks. For your doom pleasure, the simulation results, I was about to say the stimulation results, for your doom pleasure... Doom erotica. All right, bad joke. I'm sorry. Figures six through eight illustrate the simulated tephra thickness distribution in the United States and southern Canada. Let's take a look. The ones that we are looking at right here are based on a month-long Yellowstone eruption. So let's let's zoom in on this a little bit. See if we can. Zoom in here. All right, here we go. So here's the thickness. So what are, what are the biggest areas of concern here? Well, obviously, where Yellowstone is. You know, you've got Idaho in there. You've got Montana in there. You've got some of Wyoming in there. Then around it, you can see if you're in Rapid City, you're going to be just fine. You're going to have... I did the math. In Rapid City, it said it was approximately 200 and something millimeters so it's like eight it was like eight it came up to a little bit over eight and a half inches of ash i'm not that concerned about eight and a half inches of ash over my concrete dome bunker um what i am more concerned about is what it's going to do to the ozone what it's going to do to the sun or what it's going to do blocking the sun and you know this is probably something that would save the powers that be a whole lot of money they wouldn't have to spend so much money in chemtrails they could just cause some volcanoes to erupt because that's what they're attempting to do is mimic these volcanic patterns of four or five thousand years ago when multiple volcanoes were going off and it was changing the weather it was cooling the, it was cooling the earth well that's what they're trying to do with these chemtrails that's one of the applications but i mean as you can see yeah if you're in the belly of the beast then you're going to have some serious ashes you're going to have some serious ash you want to get some serious ash i'll tell you where to go for those of you that need some ash yeah here you go, ladies and gentlemen. Yellowstone, that's where it's at. You're going to have a, an ash party out there. So 
Showing you what it's going to look like in January, right? Now let's see what it's going to look like in April. Let's take a look here in uh, Diagram B. You can see there's still a ton of ash if you want to get some out there in the, the belly of the beast. Not a whole lot outside of that. You know, there's, it's going to have its opportunities. You're probably going to want to bring your tomato plants in if you've heard that saying before. But, I mean, as you can see, especially out there, you know, Denver, Salt Lake City, that's where then it starts to become even, even less, and you're high up in the mountains. But just taking a look at these graphs will, I think, give you a better perspective. The different Now, this, so this is for one month. That's for a period of a month. Now, this one right here, figure seven, is the period for a week-long Yellowstone eruption. So let's see, let's see what kind of difference we've got here. Let's zoom in here. I mean, look at this. I mean, there's ash that goes way past Atlanta. I mean, it just goes all over the place. But you can see that you're still going to have 30 to 100 millimeters, which isn't really a whole lot. I mean, that's, you know, you divide that by eight, approximately. Let's, you know, if you want to do the math, I'll, I'll do it for you guys. Let's say you're going to get exposed to 200, 200 millimeters. of ash, if you want to see how much that is in inches. Well, it's about 7.8 inches. So there you go. 200 millimeters of ash is less than a foot. 7.8 inches. So, with that said, now you've got an idea. If you're in South Dakota, you can expect about 3 to 7 inches worth of ash. Now, hey, you know, you may want to go out there in Kansas City or, you know, hang out in an area that doesn't have any mountains and be around a whole bunch of people and deal with that stuff and deal with all the nuclear reactors next to the East Coast. Or maybe you want to go to the West Coast and deal with the uh, possibility of a, a huge tidal wave. Or maybe you want to go down to California and deal with multiple volcanoes and fault lines. Maybe that's a safer place to be than, than South Dakota. But I just wanted to share this with those that are maybe even considering relocating in the future or just want to know what it's like where you're at. So now this is a figure that will share with you what it would be like if there was an eruption for just three days. Well, three days is still pretty dang intense, as you can see here. Based on the wind and the eruption itself is going to dictate... where the majority of this stuff lands and where it's going. Now, if chemtrails, geoengineering, weather manipulation, the powers that be could absolutely change the jet streams up and manipulate that. So let's take a look at this. This right here would show what the simu this shows the simulation without an umbrella cloud, so not quite as intense. Let's see what it looks like down here at first under three days. You can see there, once again, you know, you got the belly of the beast that's going to get the majority of it. And then you can see it changes up a little bit if it's for an entire week. And that's for one month. That's just pretty, pretty big deal. Now, I was reading up on the data tests and such, and they've been using wind patterns from the past 20 years, or not the past 20 years, but they've been using wind patterns that go back to at least 20 years for their patterns of the future. And I'll, I'll, you can read all the data and get into the details and stuff like that on your own time. But this is another illustration that I wanted to share with you that shows you the actual deposit thickness at selected cities from the simulations illustrated above. Now, that would be for a period of one month because this is illustration six through eight. So you can see... There you go, right there. All right. Albuquerque. 4.1 inches. No, I'm sorry, 4.1 millimeters. Atlanta, 0.5. Austin, Texas, 0.1. Billings, Montana. It gets hammered. 1,028.7 milliliters. So you just take that real quick. 1,028. What do you get? 40 inches. Well, well three and a half feet worth of three and a half feet worth of ash that is a little bit more of a concern boise idaho gets a pretty good amount nothing to be really concerned about though if you divide that once again you just take the 144 what do we got five and a half inches that's something that could easily be dealt with 
Calgary, yep. Casper, yeah, it gets hit pretty good. So Cheyenne, Wyoming, not that bad. Denver, not that bad. Iowa, well, not really. Flagstaff, hardly anything at all. Knoxville, nope. So Rapid City, about 208. So let's just put that in right here once again. 208, you're at 8.18 inches. St. Louis, hardly anything. Salt Lake, not much. San Francisco, nothing. Seattle, nothing. And here's some more charts. You know, if you take a look at this right here, this is this is serious. I mean, this is look at that. This is using a simulation of an umbrella, the umbrella deal. You know, about as bad as it gets. That is intense right there. I mean, the whole country just gets hammered. And uh, here, let's do this. Let me pull up here real quick. I'm going to open this in the figure viewer so you guys can look at a few more of these slides. This will really put it into perspective, I think, for those of you that have been wondering what to expect with a mega quake Yellowstone event. Here you have it, ladies and gentlemen. And if you're interested in purchasing a survival bunker, I would definitely check out X-Point. Go to terravivos.com and they, you will see a map there of what the area is like, what these concrete bunkers look like, and they're awesome. So open canvas for you to do what you want. Also, on top of that, make sure to stay updated on youtube.com slash clandestine time lord because I do about four to five podcasts a day. I'm working on moving that up. And if you don't have a subscription, you're gonna have uh you're not gonna know when we update all the new content. So make sure to go there and leakproject.com for exclusive content. Have a beautiful day, everybody. Be excellent to each other and be the change you want to see. LeakProject.com.